Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hello and welcome to another edition of Celebrating Act 2 with my partner John Coleman and always a special guest. What's going on, Yes, John? our special guest. <laughs> Funny you should ask, Art. <laughs> <laughs> our special guest today is a man that you know well. Uh, because we videotaped him in clubs uh, doing his club act, nightclub act. He's a crooner. He's a voiceover actor. He's an on-camera actor. You've seen him on soap operas and in commercials. And his name is Bill A. Jones. Bill, welcome to Celebrating Act Two. Thank you very much. You know, with the list of things I've done, I, the, the immediate thought that came to mind is, poor guy can't keep a job. <laughs> <laughs> But that's Video the personality as well. That's another one, is it? Oh, Lord. Yeah, that, that's the nature of acting, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. You, Reinvent you have to... yeah. Reinvention. And you, how many, over the years, now here we caught you in your home studio with your yeah. microphone in front of you, exactly. but over the years, how many jobs, maybe not jobs isn't the right word, how many careers would you say you've had? Three, at least three or more, okay. and, and many of them sort of overlapped uh, the way that yeah. it's happened. Uh, basically, while one might be tailing out, the other one is starting to tail up, hopefully. Uh, sure. For years, uh, I worked as a radio personality, uh, I, first in the Nashville market, where I'm from, uh, and then I moved out here to become the next great actor, and I'll let you know how that turns out, um, <laughs> and, uh, and got a job at a radio network and, and also worked for a spell uh, on a local station here in the market, and... Um, and so the radio thing was sort of the first career. Um, and while I was doing the radio thing, it was uh, allowing me a little uh, financial underpinning to, uh, to launch the acting and, and the other things as well. Um, so, yeah, that, that would be the first career, uh, if I were to put it that way. Um, you know, when you're a performer, and you're exactly right, you know, a reinvention is the name of the game. Um, uh, I, I, I think uh, I, I might have told you this once before that uh, performers are sort of like cockroaches. You, you can't kill us. We find a way to, uh, to get, you know, it, it said that uh, cockroaches uh, may be the only living organism after a nuclear holocaust <laughs> because they're that resilient. Uh, we're, we're right behind that. You know, there will be some guy getting up and singing Hello, Dolly at some point. Uh, uh, but... Uh, but yeah, it, reinvention, and I think that's the way of the future. It's uh, you know, it's just what is presented with. Uh, it's just what's presented to you. Uh, I, I oftentimes think of uh, the great Cloris Leachman. If you remember Cloris Leachman, sure. Cloris Leachman started as a, a rather gorgeous gal. I think she won Miss Burbank, California, back in the day, uh, and so she was this you know cute ingenue, and then she became sort of the character actress. Uh, and then she had a third act. Of, uh, I remember she was Granny in the uh, the big screen treatment of the Beverly Hillbillies. Uh, yes. So talk yeah. about a a broad swath of uh, uh, disparate roles, and that's just one example. You know, yeah. it's really uh, yeah. kind of fascinating that um, uh, a actors are a perfect metaphor for a lot of people in our audience who maybe are approaching uh, 50 or, or later and all of a sudden find themselves uh, without a job because of, uh, it's not like uh, your father and my father may have worked for GM or for a, uh, a government uh, agency and had a job for life. And uh, then they expected a pension and they moved on. Now, yeah. none of that exists anymore. Uh, so we find a lot of people who are out of work who um, are counting, have to learn about 401ks or if they haven't already learned or yeah. how to how to represent themselves, but you are perfect, and your colleagues, or your fellow actors, and people in the entertainment have been reinventing themselves for years. Without that, uh, you would uh, go back and find yourself as a truck driver or something, trying to, yeah. as opposed to continue your act. So, what do you think is the secret to uh, an actor um, uh, being able to constantly look at? At things in a new way to find uh, new things to do rather than just give up? Well, I think part of it has to do with just the, the training itself and the very nature of, uh, of being an actor. <coughs> Excuse me. I'll, I'll give you that again in case you want to cut it in. 
<laughs> no, no, that was a, that was good. Thank. You. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I think part of it has to do with the, the, the just the mere um, uh, art of being an actor. You portray different roles, and uh, you are able to put on the mask, or more properly, as far as my training and, and attitude is concerned, you take off the mask depending on on what it is that you're actually doing or or who you're portraying. Uh, and so you have to have that flexibility uh, to be able to do that if you're going to be more than just a you know a one shot pony, so to speak, or one trick pony. Um, and, and so that's what you do. I mean, uh, uh, whether it be doing different roles, like I talked about Chorus Leachman earlier, or doing different things. Uh, a lot of uh, my colleagues uh, have discovered the thing that I've been doing for many, many years, which is voiceover. Um, you can see the microphone right here. I'm, you know, I've got the home studio. I've been doing uh, voiceover from the home studio well, well over 15 years. And uh, it's been an important part of my career. And, and so uh, that's, that's one thing that a lot of actors have, uh, have come across, uh, voiceover. And then you learn other aspects of, of, uh, of the trade. You learn other ways to interact with people. Uh, th there are so many things. It's dizzying the number of different things that uh, are, are thrust into our universe, whether it be social media and ways to reach out and engage with fans uh, or to reach out and entertain people and hopefully in a virtual way receive some recompense back. Uh, and, and you have to remain flexible. You have to remain flexible and willing to look on all of this as uh, an adventure to, uh, uh, to be invigorated by and not, not trodden down. Now, Bill, uh, we first met you uh, when we videotaped your club act, your nightclub act, a couple of yeah. years ago, and uh, we're fascinated by a great performance, by the way, with you, the band. Thank and you. Um, I wondered, when did you get into singing? Have you have you always been a singer? Ooh. You know, it, it's funny. Um, when I was uh, in my teens, early teens, about the time my voice was changing, uh, I, I came out of a musical family. I grew up outside of Nashville, Tennessee, and, and the music for us was primarily country music that we performed. Uh, my older sister and my aunt, who was more like a sister, she was a late arrival on the part of my grandparents, uh, we would go around all these little, uh, you know, country uh, talent shows and, and perform and, and what have you. Uh, and, um, and I just forgot my train of thought here. Uh, this is what happens when you're above a certain age. Sometimes that happens. Uh, <laughs> and so uh, anyway, uh, I, as a little kid, I was singing. And, and um, as a matter of fact, there's a great story about how I was singing some song and, and, uh, and everyone in the audience was going crazy and laughing and enjoying themselves. And then I went off stage and someone told me that my fly was down. Um, <laughs> just classic stuff. But uh, some talent uh, scout actually told me when I was around uh, 11 or 12 or something like that, uh, he was very interested in my uh, aunt, who was, you know, very, very talented. Uh, unfortunately, she left us uh, because of a, a car accident many years ago. But uh, he was very interested in her. He had some interest in my older sister uh, as far as developing the two of them. Uh, and he looked at me and he just said simply, and you can't sing. And I took that to heart. <laughs> I really did. I took that to heart. Now, my voice was changing at the time, you know, whatever. But, uh, but I took it to heart. And I felt, well, well I, I can't sing. And so I felt very inferior for years about this. And uh, got into high school, started doing plays, started doing theater. Um, and and sort of had to be convinced that that I could sing and and I did. Uh, later on in college, as I was uh, studying theater, I started taking voice lessons, and finally I was doing a, a show in Nashville at the Tennessee Performing Arts Center with uh, Circle Players. Uh, I was doing um, Little Night Music. I was doing the role of Count Carl Magnus Malcolm, uh, a real dragoon in a Little Night Music, and and he has this wonderful song. Uh, called In Praise of Women. Capable, pliable women, women, undemanding and reliable, knowing their place. He was not exactly a feminist, as you can pretty much guess from this uh, lyric. Uh, but it was a great performance. And, and uh, I, I did it, this is before I had LASIK. I did it without glasses or uh, contact lenses. And I remember I had to be led off stage. I was that blind when the lights went out. 
But I felt so good about it. I, I thought to myself, I remember thinking during one of those performances, screw what that guy said. I can sing. And that headed me down a path in which I studied more seriously with uh, my longtime uh, uh, voice teacher. Um, and, and I started singing eventually with uh, a big band in Nashville and then moved out here and then uh, got distracted and, and um, didn't sing for about 15 years. Uh, I, I had been doing musicals in Nashville. Uh, I did a lot of musicals. Uh, and I came out here, and the theater seemed very, very different, very different. And um, and so I sort of said, well, this singing thing, ah, that's that's poppycock. I mean, I need to concentrate on other aspects, and I did. Uh, I, I, you know, worked in radio. I started working on camera in various aspects. Uh, met my wife, had some kids, um, all of those things. And that part of me almost shriveled up and died. And then some wonderful things happened. My wife works in the travel industry, and, and several years ago, uh, it's well, it was, we were pregnant with our youngest child, who's now almost 18, so let's give you an idea. Uh, we were on a cruise up in Alaska. She was representing the cruise line at the time. And uh, it was the ubiquitous um, talent night. I sang with this group of, of marvelous young performers out of McGill University in Canada. And I uh, did uh, remember, but not for me. They're writing songs of love, but not for me. And so I did this song and got a very big reaction. The next day, uh, people were coming up to me at breakfast and saying, you're really a professional, aren't you? And I said, well, I've done some stuff in the past. Then the, the paid classical duo came over and sat next to us at uh, uh, breakfast and we're very encouraging and well anyway came back to LA uh, through one coincidence after another uh, I met people and and uh, uh, started singing with big bands again uh, I, I uh, toured with briefly with uh, one of the Glenn Miller orchestras I've had the chance to uh, work with musicians who worked with Sinatra I have actually uh, gotten several of Mr. Sinatra's uh, big band arrangements, uh, or at least very good copies of them, if you're from the Sinatra estate. <clears throat> and uh, <clears throat> never mind where I got those. There was a guy who worked at Sinatra's office for about 10 years. Never mind. Uh, and, uh, and, and it's been a joy. And, and what that has been for me, and, and the big takeaway is this. You have to find something that will keep your joy spring lubricated, if you will. Uh, uh, oftentimes, as an actor, uh, you go for months without booking a job, sometimes years. Uh, and so there is a, a dearth of work. Some people uh, in my industry become part of a, a theater company in order to keep something going uh, creatively. Uh, other people find other outlets. For me, it's become this singing thing. And it's been a joy and a wonderful thing, and, 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 and I absolutely love it. So, yeah. um, Bill, this is... Bill uh, it seems to me that uh, one of the things that you do as an actor, as actors do in general, but <clears throat> is that you're willing to try things that have unknown connected to it, out of your comfort zone, uh, whether <laughs> it goes from acting on a stage, yeah. to acting in a movie, to being on a radio uh, as an announcer. It's all different feelings. Or voiceover work. They mm -hmm. all have different ways of expressing themselves. And it seems that uh, you're a perfect example of what we all need to do when we think we're stuck or we can't do something, is don't let somebody tell us we can't do it. That's uh, right. Don't worry about being uncomfortable because what happens is within two or three days of you starting something new, all of a sudden you're into that routine. And while you can still go back and do maybe something else that you're familiar with, uh, the bottom line is that uh, if you just try something, you'll get comfortable with it, and then that could become the basis of a new career. Yeah, and, and I think it's important to try to find something that energizes you, that excites you. Uh, I, think, I think it's all too, um, <clears throat> it's all too common of people to to get in their heads and think, well, uh, this is a good field. I could maybe make some money at this. Well, I'm going to question, 
do you really enjoy the prospect of doing that? Um, I, I have, I, I've totally enjoyed, you know, uh, going down the road of singing, and it's become another part of my career, uh, fortunately. Uh, but, uh, you know, I've had certain people say, well, I think I'll do some real estate. Well, are you really excited by that? If not, look at something else. Try to find a different, as I called it when I first moved here to Southern California, try to find a different survival strategy. Uh, and, then, and then along with that, for people of my age and older, uh, and as you approach this age, I think it's very important to also be very um, practical when it comes to this. Because life is uncertain, because things change, it's important to... Uh, to be ready as far as your finances are concerned. Uh, I remember running into a I'll leave I'll leave his name out of this, but I ran into a guy who was uh, who has won an Emmy for uh, daytime drama, and I, and I talked with him uh, and I said, save your money, save your money, stick some money away, you know, have a little cushion, because um, that will keep you out of the desperation mode. Uh, if you're in desperation. Uh, it puts you into a, a bad place. So be prepared. Uh, you know, ha, you know. Talk to financial planners. Uh, if you have a job, you know, try to salt money away. Try to be. Uh, you know, consider the possibility of of going a few more years without buying a new car. Uh, uh, consider uh, those things. Uh, and it's not always easy. You know, I mean, uh, you have to look uh, at those things and. And be respectful of the possibilities that the future may bring, both good and bad. Great advice. Great advice. Yeah. I love your story, Bill, about uh, about uh, getting into the singing, getting back into singing. Because yeah. uh, looking at your, you know, the videos we did for celebrating Act Two of your nightclub act, you would never, <laughs> ever <laughs> compare that guy on stage commanding an audience in the palm of his hand. Uh, doing, you know, classic American songbook songs. Compare that to the to the kid who was told he could never sing. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. By the way, uh, Bill, um, uh, I, I don't want to uh, uh, complete this interview without uh, allowing for a shameless plug. Um, <laughs> uh, you do. <laughs> Amen. You have, I'm, I'm big on that. Yeah. You, you have you you have uh, uh, some of your work recorded. Uh, uh, CDs that are available. Where can people get them if they're interested? Because they're they're really very very good. You, you, it, well, if, if you've you. never if you've never heard <clears throat> Bill in concert, this is a treat. Well, yeah. thank you, Art. I, I greatly appreciate that. Uh, uh, I, I think one thing I would ask people to do is go to my website, BillAJones.com, and hopefully there's a little link there on the entrance page that uh, you can click and sign up for my email newsletter. And I. And I Promise to not send it out so often as it'll be a major irritant, or or send you anything about Canadian pharmacies or, or hot girls in your neighborhood. <laughs> Don't look so disappointed, John. Yes. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, so that will let you know what's happening with me and my career, and it's all of its multifaceted, so to speak, uh, and also you know where I'm going to be performing uh, uh, live with uh, with a band. Oh, sorry, that's the heater clicking on there. Let me know if that's too noisy, and I'll, I'll shut that thing off. I forgot to cut that off earlier. That's fine. Uh, so, yeah, sign up for the email newsletter. That's number one. Um, you can get my CDs. I have two CDs out so far, uh, and those are available on Amazon. If you uh, search, be sure to search for Bill A. Jones. Otherwise, you're liable to pull up uh, the music of a female British folk singer named Bill Jones. I kid ah. you not. <laughs> wow. So search for Bill A. Jones. Um, and, that's not, um, that's, a, that's a, not another way of you being flexible. Of yeah, accept, well, of accepting your challenge. <laughs> Bill A. Jones, the man, be. and Bill A. Jones, the Brit. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. You know, and uh, uh, yeah, and, and you know, there's more than one Bill Jones is, uh, you know, in the guilds and what have you. So, so Bill A. Jones. You know, I, uh, there are some performers that are known by one name: Elvis, uh, Madonna. <laughs> I use three: Bill A. Jones. I need every name I can possibly get. So. <laughs> That's good. Well, good, Bill. I'm glad uh, uh, people will know how to get your CD. Um, thank you so much for sharing some information about your career and uh, your life story. And 
I urge people to sign up for your newsletter and get to see you in person Thank as you. Uh, as soon as possible. Thank you. I, you know, it's been a joy being on the show. Thank you so much, gentlemen, and and to everyone that um, that is tuned in to use an antiquated uh, phrase. Um, one final thought uh, that was shared to me uh, by a wonderful acting coach of mine named Candy Herman. Have a life. Have a life. Uh, don't postpone, you know, that relationship. Don't postpone uh, having kids because those are things that can help sustain you during all of those transitions that are bound to happen uh, in this life that we're now living. Uh, and, you know, and I'm very grateful for my wife and, uh, you know, my kids and, and, you know, even our little dog, Pumpkin, who is, <laughs> who's wonderful. And so uh, have a life and, and be flexible and be ready to embrace that act two. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.